In this problem, we're going to maximize this function subject to this constraint over here, x plus y minus 2 equals 0. We're going to do it using the method of Lagrange multipliers. So let's go ahead and work it out. So the method of Lagrange multipliers says that you start by solving the following equations. So we have the gradient of f of xy. That's equal to lambda times the gradient of g of xy. And the other equation we have to solve is g of xy equal to a constant. So in this problem, this is our g, and this is our constant. So all we have to do is solve these equations. So recall the gradient vector uh, is the vector consisting of the first order partial derivatives. So it'll be fx, that's the partial with respect to x, fy. Then here we have lambda, then we have gx, gy. And then this piece here, um, this is simply what we have up here already. So before we take the partial derivatives of f, um, it might be beneficial to rewrite this as follows. We can write the square root function uh, as an exponent, the one-half exponent. So this is like this. You can write it like this. So now when we take the partials, uh, it's a little bit uh, easier. I'm going to go ahead and take the partials up here so we don't clutter the problem below. So when we take the partial with respect to x, you put the one-half in the front. If you leave the inside alone, right, we're going to use the chain rule. So 6 minus x squared minus y squared. You subtract 1. So 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then times the derivative of the inside function, right? That's the chain rule. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So everything is 0 except when we look at the x. So it'll be negative 2x. Boom, there it is. So now the 2's cancel. And so you just get negative x. And you can bring this bad boy downstairs, turn it back into a positive one half, and then let's be pro, let's turn it into a square root. So 6 minus x squared minus y squared. You can do the same thing with fy. It's going to be exactly the same, but I'll do it. So it's one half, or not exactly the same, very, very similar. 6 minus x squared minus y squared, and then we get negative one half times the derivative of the inside, right? And except this time, all the stuff with x and that number, it's all zero, so we just get negative 2y. So it's the same thing, the 2's cancel. So we get the same thing, except we get negative y over, and then 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, let's go ahead and fill it in down here. So we have angle bracket, negative x over square root 6 minus x squared minus y squared, and then comma, and same thing here, it's negative y over, and then we have square root, 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Then we have our bracket. And that's equal to lambda. All right, so what's going on with little g? Well, it's going to be pretty easy, actually. Not much. <laughs> so g sub x is just 1, right? And then g sub y is also 1. Super easy, right? The derivative of x is 1. Everything else is 0, right? And then when you take this one, um, again, it's just 1. So this is angle bracket. 1 comma 1. All right, so this is equal to lambda lambda. Fun stuff, right? So this is equal to lambda, and this is equal to lambda, right? So that's what we're getting from this equation, right? So we're getting that lambda is equal to negative x over the square root of 6 minus x squared minus y squared. We're also getting that lambda is equal to negative y over the square root of 6 minus x squared minus y squared. So lambda is equal to both of these things. Uh, therefore, they must be equal, right? So negative x is equal to the square root of 6 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to negative y over the square root. So these are the same because they're both equal to lambda. So therefore, they must be the same. Kind of cool. Um, at this point, you can just multiply both sides by, by the square root that's here, right? You could do that, right? Like, you could, just, you could just do this. There's nothing wrong with that. And then, boom. Right, you could do that. And this is gone, and it's gone. So you get um, negative x equals negative y. Oh, look at that. So x equals y. Boom. So now we're kind of stuck, right? So what do you do now? Well, 
usually when you have some relationship uh, between x and y, um, you go back to your constraint, right? So let me scroll up. There it is. There's our beautiful constraint right here. Boom. So x is equal to y. So we can write this as x plus x minus 2 equals 0. So um, 2x minus 2 equals 0. So 2x is equal to 2, right? You add 2. So x is equal to 1. But x is equal to y, so y is equal to 1. So we have our x, we have our y, we just need our z value, which is going to be our maximum, right? We wanted a maximum in this problem. So all we do is plug it in here, right? Plug our x and y in here. So f of 1, 1, let's do it, is equal to the square root of 6 minus, well, 1 squared, that's just 1, minus 1. So we get 6 minus 2, which is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. And that, my friends, is our maximum value. So that's how you use Lagrange multipliers. I hope this video uh, has made uh, sense. That's it.